Alrighty, so in this video we're going to come back to something we briefly saw in the video I made about um, refraction. We're going to look at something called total internal reflection. So previously we were looking at what was happening on this boundary over here. So light is coming in, it's going straight through this boundary because it comes in at, along the normal, and then it's refracted here. So nothing surprising, it's going from glass into air so it bends away from the normal. So the interesting thing happens when we start to give ourselves a bigger angle of incidence. So if we make it big enough, we can see it switches, and now the light is reflected off of this boundary. It doesn't go through and it's not refracted. So what we're going to look for is the first angle where this starts to happen. So we can see we've still got some reflection happening there, so we haven't found it yet. Let's go, we want to get it so it's going right along the boundary. There we go, I reckon that's it. So we're going to be interested in what angle of incidence this has occurred. So let's just, there's our boundary. Here's where the light comes in. Give ourselves some X's. Here's where it actually strikes the boundary here. And what's happening to the light is it then goes along the boundary. So let's take everything away and turn off our light. Okay, so let's actually draw our rays on there now. This is why we've marked the X's. So our ray comes in here, and it's hard to show this, but essentially the light was going along the boundary. So it's going off in this direction here. So it, it came in here and went off here. So I'm going to draw in the normal line, because whenever we're doing optics, we're always measured, interested in what's going on. So this angle is given a specific name. It's called the critical angle. So it's the angle at which we see the light go along the boundary here. So some other useful things is, because it's going along the boundary, we know that R is 90 degrees, because it's essentially going along the boundary, so it's a 90 degrees to the normal there. So we know it was starting in glass, so we know that N1 is 1.5. And we know it's trying to go into air, so we know that N2 is going to be 1 in there, because it's trying to go into air. So what we can do is we can use Snell's law to predict what this angle is, and then we'll see how well that matches up with reality. So let's actually uh, get into the mathematics of Snell's law. So Snell's law tells us that Essentially, the refractive index before the boundary times the sine of angle instance is equal to the refractive index after the boundary times by this one. And so this is why it's important we're not having it being reflected here. This only models refraction, and this is the last possible instance of refraction. So we want to calculate C, which is going to be the I in this one here. So I'm going to rearrange this. So sine I is going to be N2 sine R over n1. So we're actually in a position to calculate this. So n2 is 1, sine r is sine of 90, and those of you who've met this in maths should know that sine of 90 is equal to 1, which is nice, and then n1 is 1.50. So that just ends up being this calculation here, uh, and if I stick that into my calculator, 1 divided by 1.5, I probably could have done in that in my head, but this is 0 0.666, blah, 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 blah. So that means that I, in this case, if we take the inverse sign of that, so inverse sign answer, we reckon that the angle of instance in this particular scenario should be 42 degrees. So let's get a protractor and actually measure it. And you see, here's 40, I reckon that's 43 degrees. So we can see that our Snell's law has, is able to predict from us, for us, what the critical angle is, um, because the critical angle is the angle of incidence when the light goes along the boundary, or the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Now I just want to quickly show you the other key thing we need to know about total internal reflection. So. Let's come back to our light box uh, and so we can actually see this in action. So, so this here was our critical angle. So the key thing is, if I make the angle of incidence bigger, all of the light is now reflected. 
So if your angle of incidence is bigger than the critical angle, we get what's called total internal reflection because all the light gets reflected. Okay, so in order to get TIR, we need the angle of incidence to be bigger than the critical angle. So it needs to be, in this case, bigger than 42 degrees. Now, the other thing I want to show you is you have to be trying to go from high refractive index to low refractive index. Okay, so in this case, the light is trying to go from grass into air. But in this case, it hasn't. It's been reflected. But we're still trying to go from high into low. So if we flip this round, so let's actually try and set, set this up here. So in uh, this boundary here, we're trying to go from air into glass. So we're trying to go to a higher refractive index. And it doesn't matter how big I make the angle of incidence, you can see the light is still crossing this boundary. Some of it gets reflected, yes, but not all of it. So we never get total internal reflection. So that's our other condition required to have total internal reflection. You have to be trying to go from high refractive index into low, and your angle of incidence has to be bigger than the critical angle. That's the key that we need to get total internal reflection. And there's lots of devices that actually make use of this. So um, some examples might be optical fibers, uh, which we use to send internet to most houses these days. And also something like an endoscope, which your doctor will use to look inside your digestive system. Um, so this principle, total internal reflection, is made, taken advantage of in lots of situations. And these are the scenarios in which it can occur.